In this video, I'll provide you a short overview on construction delay claims, what they are, and how do we um, analyze them in practice. It's really a short summary of my various books on delay analysis. So let's see if we can do it in around five minutes. Firstly, what is a construction delay? Now, a construction delay occurs when the contractual completion date is delayed for a certain period of time. Now, typically, um, in a construction contract, we would have a specific construction duration and a date when construction should be completed. Um, on the bottom bar, you can see what happens when a delay occurs. Um, so possibly there will be an impact on the project completion date. Um, now the delay might cause the project completion date to uh, be at a later date. Um, now delay analysis is in essence only the process of establishing whether this delay event ultimately impacted the construction completion date and to what extent. Uh, you may ask, but why is this important? Um, now, I think for all owners, it's important to have the project completed by a specific time. If it's not completed, there might be uh, damages uh, that they will suffer, for example, loss of rental income. Uh, for the contractor, it costs money to operate uh, construction on site, so being there longer than planned would mean additional costs to the contractor. So, um, most construction contracts would have a provision for liquidated damages, I think, to protect the owner against the risk of um, of the project being completed later than planned. So in essence, what would happen is the contractor, if uh, not, if he or she does not complete the project in time, would need to pay um, a certain amount to the owner for damages. Um, but what happens if there is a legitimate delay that the contractor suffers? Surely it's not fair for the contractor then to be liable for damages and the construction contracts would then include a provision for extension of time that allows the contractor to apply for the contract completion date to be extended to a later date as a result of the delay. So let's see how this process normally on Folds. Um, so firstly, the contractor would become aware of a certain event that might delay completion. Um, most contracts would require the contractor then to issue a formal notification of delay. This notification can take various forms. It can be a, a email or a uh, a written document and the contract would normally give guidance. This document would go to the owner and that enables the owner to take certain action from their side also to assist in reducing the impact of the delay. Um, the contractor then would need to submit a formal delay claim or extension of time claim. Now in this delay claim the contractor need to analyze the delay and determine the impact and the extent of the impact of completion. This delay claim is then submitted to the owner and that is uh, when the owner would also have to do delay analysis in terms of reviewing the claim and establishing whether or not this delay event impacted completion and what the extent of the impact was. Now, if the delay claim is approved, the construction time would be extended. Um, 
if it's rejected, the construction uh, completion date will remain the same and the contractor would have to accelerate the work or face the risk of paying liquidated damages. So how do we do delay analysis? Now, this is a short uh, summary of the steps involved in the delay analysis that was developed through my PhD and available in my books on delay analysis. So step one is to look uh, at contract compliance. Now, most, most contracts would have certain provisions um, of what needs to be done in terms of applying for additional time. Now, uh, the first obligation by the contractor normally is to issue a notification of delay. Many contracts would have a strict time requirement or a time bar for this a notification and if this notification is not issued within a specific period of time, say 21 days, then the contractor would forfeit his or her right to claim for additional time. There might also be some other claim requirements in terms of content that should be provided with the claim documents. Now that's the first step and if the contractor is in compliance, one moves on to the second step and in the second step we look at excusability so whether this delay event is excusable what do we mean by excusable now excusable delay is a delay caused by firstly um, any third parties or incidents that's beyond the control of the owner and the contractor or it might be something caused directly by the owner or the owner's agents now, the contracts would also give you guidance in terms of what qualifies as an excusable delay. So, um, if the delay is uh, judged as excusable, one would move on to step three. And step three, we would look at criticality. Um, now, what is a critical delay? Um, that's a delay on the critical path um, and the end result of a delay of a critical path is that the completion date will be delayed. You might ask, but what is the critical path? And the formal definition is the sequence of succeeding activities with the longest duration of all activities required to complete a project. So one could see anything that would happen um, in terms of the sequence would ultimately postpone or delay the completion date. Now there's um, more or less five common methods of delay analysis, critical path delay analysis methods. They all rely on project schedules or programs and um, I think there's some are better for specific purposes than others um, and be on the lookout for future videos on how to apply these methods. Now in looking at criticality we would determine uh, the impact on the completion date so whether or not this delay indeed impacted project completion um, and we would also determine the extent of the delay. Typically in the number of days the project um, were or was delayed by the delay event. Now if we establish that indeed it was delayed we will move on to step four and determine whether the delay is compensable. Um, Again, the contract would give guidance, but um, in essence, I think in the industry, typically an excusable delay caused by the owner or the owner's uh, agents would qualify for compensation. Um, in this case, compens in addition to the compensation, obviously the contract completion time would be extended. And then the final step would be the to determine the specific compensation and again the contract or the bidding documents would provide guidance. So in essence that's shortly how we would um, analyze uh, delay claims. So shortly in 
10 minutes, so I hope this is helpful. I'll put the links um, in the description to the book and also a training course and subscribe for future short videos on delay analysis.